Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the best announcement of a lifetime, and it is Beethoven will stay with us forever. Why? Because his music preserves forever lasting human values. But the question is, what kind of technique to use, what kind of conducting technique to use to conduct the beginning of the second movement of symphony number no. five uh, to make it very expressive? The answer is on beat, off beat cueings, and active and passive conducting. What am I talking about? Active and passive conducting. Active is when the preparation beat and the downbeat both um, involves clear ictuses. Passive, no ictus. On beat, off beat, preparation beat, the combination of the two. But before we go a little bit deeper with this, let's see what Beethoven put on paper here. We can see a beautiful melody in the lower human voice range, the male voice range, that is follows by the extended little cadence of the music. Let's go back and let's try to get an idea in terms of sound, how Beethoven might have heard that in his mind when he played it on the piano. what Beethoven said in the score. We can see a very clear start, the music in 3-8, to make sure that it will be different notation, then they will support the idea of the tempo mark on the Tecomoto even more, because the next movement is in 3-4, so you can't do two movements in the same, it wouldn't make that much sense. We see that the music starts on 3, so we give a preparation bit exactly from 2. What characteristics? Here is the pizzicato in the bass. That will tell you that <laughs> bits and bits. And because it's piano, you use smaller conducting frame and you turn to the right side where the cello, the viola, the cello and the bass are sitting. Often you give a bigger space for the forte accent. Also the climax needs an active uh, conducting. And don't forget in, in the second bar, there's a slurred note. This is where you use the offbeat conducting gesture, which means from one you pull your hand and give a very clear two. <coughs> ba -da -ba -da. And it will be very clear. For the high wood winds, you have to move your conducting frame higher, give an active preparation beat in piano for uh, three and a very clear forte on one. Same story, offbeat cueing for the violins in the piano entrance. Don't forget to cue the clarinets here, the entering clarinets, build it up to forte and finish the downbeat on piano. Start piano and forte on one and everyone plays forte on three and in the next one and piano and piano more extensive, more expressive, more energy, bigger space for the forte, and one, and two, and three, and one. Throws your arm there. So the start again, pizzicato, turning to the right, pits, pits. Keep going with the melody. After come the next pits on second bar one, and off beat cueing, <laughs> ba -dum, ba -dum. Forte is coming for the climax, and E flat and pound on the piano. Same story for the, to the strings and you turn to the left to the violins and then the woodwinds are coming in higher and concentrate again, creep from two to three and downbeat. And just follow what I said a second ago about this all. Now let's go and let's see how big conductors are doing that and what can we learn from their conducting. I found some uh, the very nice start 
that probably I would show you first, they, they, because they are not fully shown by the conductors, but the beginning is very clear. And here is one uh, the, that the Herbert uh, Blomstedt is demonstrating very clearly. Just watch his hand where he starts. You could see very clearly that uh, there was no any extra beats. He put his hand to the downbeat and point of two and started for three. I have another one that I would like to share with you with the same music and with the same spot that I would like you to listen to. And here it is with Bar and Boam. He is doing also very clearly the starts, the classical way. Just watch his hand, where he starts, how he starts. I think it was also a very clear start, very clear demonstration how to start the piece from exactly the downbeat of two, because there's no full bar, no breaks. The piece starts with a pickup note, out, after Beethoven said, and down. After he was missing the offbeat cueing, but the excellent musicians did the job for him. And also the phrasing uh, for the, the high C, B flat, e, A flat, he showed a very nice horizontal characteristics of the melody. Uh, that is uh, absolutely written like that. Let's see a little more and longer excerpt. And here is Karayan, and I would like you to watch his hand, how he's doing. Yes, to think about it and go back and watch one more time what he did because the uh, number one tempo excellent the horizontal characteristics of the music excellent he starts with extra one and two that is not written and not necessary as you could see in the previous two excerpts and he doesn't really care too much about the dynamics the piano and forte is almost the same size in his hands i don't suggest that to follow but he was connecting with the musicians who were playing he turned to the the higher strings the lower strings and the woodwinds very clearly i wish the first flute is to play the triplet a little bit more re uh, relaxed and not rushing B -d 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 -d, the g a flat b flat a flat just don't rush with that that much but his characteristics was very nice he also showed the climax of the E flat at the end of the, uh, the phrase introduced and with the cadence also showed the phrasing, but no dynamics were shown at all. Here's another excerpt that I would like to share with you. Maybe we can learn from that even more. Let's see how Leonard Bernstein is doing the same short excerpt for us this morning.
Well, we could learn a lot from that. The tempo was very clear. He also didn't add the one, two. He started on three, the piece. They were a very clear demonstration of the dynamical contrast. He also showed the nice horizontal lane. He was also connected with his face to the musicians, adjusting the horizontal lane wherever the eyes are of the important musicians, cello, viola on the left, violins in the, uh, to the right, violins to the left, and the woodwinds in the middle. And the triplet was much more clear from the first flute here. Those subdivisions, I didn't really suggest to follow what he did because he just needed more time because all the group was following him or he was ahead and he didn't feel to be synchronized very well. So this is how he adjusted the time differences with a little subdivisions, little weightings on those certain bits. I don't like, uh, I don't uh, suggest you to follow that, but the dynamical contrast the phrasing showing the climaxes of the music, I think it was very clear. You see, conducting is a real challenging, beautiful profession. And I hope you enjoy my Hungarian accent and you think it's a useful, helpful uh, explanation to love classical music and Beethoven even more. Thank you very much. I will be back, I promise. Have a great day.